What's going on YouTube? Chris here from Project Option and in this video I'm going to be explaining to you Option Delta and if you're not familiar with Delta, Delta is one of the four Option Greeks and the Option Greeks help us understand how our option positions are expected to perform relative to changes in specific things in the environment. The Option Greek Delta is the directional risk measurement of an option and all that means is that Delta tells us how much an option's price is expected to change relative to a change in the stock price. More specifically, an options delta tells us the expected price change of that option relative to a $1 movement in the stock price. Let's look at some examples so I can show you exactly what I mean by that. Let's say we have a call option with a price of $5 and the delta of that call option is a positive 0.75. What that means is that if the stock price increases by $1, that option is expected to increase by 75 cents to $5.75. Now, on the other hand, if the stock price decreases by $1, that $5 call option is expected to lose 75 cents of value based on the delta of 0.75, and with a $1 decrease in the stock price, the option is expected to lose 75 cents and be worth $4.25 after that $1 decrease in the stock price. Let's say we have a put option with a price of $3 and the delta of that put option is negative 0.25. What that means is that if the stock price increases by $1, that $3 put option is expected to be worth 25 cents less at $2.75 an option after that $1 increase in the stock price. On the other hand, if the stock price falls by $1, that $3 put option with a delta of negative 0.25 is expected to be worth $3.25 after that $1 decrease in the stock price. From these examples, we can learn that an option's estimated value after a $1 increase in the stock price is the current option price plus the option's delta. So in the example where I had a $5 call option with a positive 0.75 delta, a $1 increase in the stock price suggests that the option is expected to be worth $5.75. On the other hand, since the put options delta is negative, that $3 put option with a negative 0.25 delta is expected to be worth $3 plus a negative 0.25, which gives us $3 minus 0.25, and that gives us an estimated put option value of $2.75. To estimate an option's expected price after a $1 decrease in the stock price, we take the current option value and subtract the option's delta from that price. So in the case of the $5 call option with a positive 0.75 delta, the estimated option price after a $1 decrease in the stock price is $5 minus the option's delta of 0.75, which gives us an estimated call price of $4.25 after that $1 decrease in the stock price. Now for put options, since a put option has negative delta, if we subtract a negative number, we actually are adding that number. So in the case of having a $3 put option with a delta of negative 0.25, if we take $3 minus negative 0.25, we are actually doing the calculation of $3 plus 0.25, and that means after a $1 decrease in the stock price, a put option is going to be worth more because its option delta is negative. So what we can learn from this first section in this video is that call options are expected to increase in value as the stock price increases and lose value as the stock price decreases. And on the other hand, put options, since they have negative deltas, we expect put options to decrease in value as the stock price increases and we expect put options to increase in value as the stock price falls. On the Tastyworks trading platform, you can select Delta or any of the option Greeks as a metric to view on the trade tab. And when you do that, you can see the Delta of every single option. And as we can see from this image, as I mentioned before, call option Deltas are positive while put option Deltas are negative. And at each respective strike price, we can see the different levels of Deltas for each of those options. Let's look at some examples of option price changes relative to changes in the stock price to better understand what Delta is trying to help us accomplish. In this illustration, we can see that the price of the call option increases and decreases in tandem with the stock price, and the charts look almost the same, but keep in mind that the option is not changing by the same amount as the stock price movements, and that is exactly what Delta is trying to help us do. The Delta of a call option helps us understand how the call's price 
is expected to change with a $1 change in the stock price. On the other hand, put options gain value as the stock price falls and lose value as the stock price increases. In this illustration, we can see the opposite relationship between the put price and the stock price. And again, the charts look opposite as the put gains value when the stock price falls and loses value when the stock price increases. But keep in mind again that the option price is not changing by the same magnitude as the change in the stock price. And that's exactly what the puts delta is going to try and tell us. The delta of a put option helps us understand how the puts price is expected to change with a $1 change in the stock price. Understandably then, options with larger delta values will experience larger price changes relative to the same stock price movement as compared to options with smaller delta values. So for instance, if I have a call option with a delta of positive 0.8, that option is expected to change by 80 cents with a $1 change in the stock price. Whereas if I look at an option or a call option with a delta of 0.2, that call option is expected to change by 20 cents for a $1 change in the stock price. So options with larger delta values or deltas closer to one will experience greater price changes as the stock price is changing. In this illustration, we can see the cumulative price changes of the call options starting at various delta levels. In the shaded region in the beginning of this chart, the stock price increased by $4. The original 0.75 delta call increased by $3. The original 0.5 delta call increased by $2. And the original 0.25 delta call increased by $1. These option price changes are exactly what delta would have predicted because if we take a 0.5 delta call option and multiply it by a $4 stock price increase, we would expect that call option to increase by about 50 cents for each dollar increase in the stock price. Based on that, a $4 increase in the stock price should give us about a $2 increase in the option price, which is exactly what we observed in this chart. In this example, the option changes were exactly what Delta would have predicted, but keep in mind that it's not always going to work out this perfectly because Delta is an estimation of a change in an option price based on a $1 change in the stock price. So Delta is going to be less and less accurate for larger and larger stock price movements. And that's because Delta itself will actually change as the stock price changes, as time passes, and as implied volatility changes. But those are completely separate topics that I will address in an additional video. In this illustration, we can see the price changes of put options at varying starting Delta levels. And in this example, the stock price also increased by $4 but the put options experienced slightly larger price changes than the Delta would have suggested. As I said, it's not perfect because Delta is more accurate for small stock price changes, not larger changes like $4. Additionally, option Deltas will change as the stock price changes, as time passes, and as implied volatility changes, as I just mentioned. The main point I'm trying to get across here is that option Deltas are fairly accurate and can be used to estimate option price changes relative to small changes in the stock price. Moving on, let's talk about call option deltas and put option deltas as they relate to where the strike price is relative to the current stock price. In this illustration, we can clearly visualize the relationship between put option and call option deltas relative to their strike prices versus the stock price. In general, put options and call options with strike prices near the stock price will have deltas near 0.50, and for call options, that means the calls with strike prices near the stock price will have deltas near positive 0.50. And for put options, the put options with strike prices near the stock price will have deltas near negative 0.50. If we look at the strike prices lower than the stock price, we can see that the call deltas are higher than 0.50 and increase towards 1.0 at lower and lower strike prices. For put options, the delta of these options with strike prices less than the stock price are higher than negative 0.50 and move closer to zero as we move to lower and lower put strike prices. If we look at strike prices higher than the stock price, we can see that the call deltas are less than positive 0.50 and decrease towards zero at higher and higher strike prices. For the put options, the deltas of these options with strike prices higher than the stock price are less than negative 0.50 and move closer towards negative 1.0 as we move to higher and higher strike prices. In addition to being an estimator of an options price change relative to a $1 movement in the stock price, an options delta is also frequently used as an estimation of the probability of that option expiring in the money. 
So based on that, we can actually make more sense of these delta values by looking at call options and put options at various strike prices and looking at their deltas and converting them into probabilities of those specific options expiring in the money. If we look at this chart, it makes complete sense then that the call options at lower strike prices have higher delta values as calls at lower strike prices have a higher probability of expiring in the money than call options at higher strike prices. Conversely, put options with higher strike prices have deltas closer to negative 1.0 and put options at lower strike prices have deltas closer to zero, suggesting that put options at higher strike prices have a higher probability of expiring in the money than put options at lower strike prices. We can estimate the probability of an option expiring in the money by converting the options delta into a percentage. So for example, if I have a call option with a delta of 0.75, that call option has a 75% chance of being in the money at expiration, or at least an estimated probability of 75%. If I look at a put option with a delta of negative 0.30, that put option has an estimated 30% chance of expiring in the money. So to convert an option's delta into the probability of that option expiring in the money, all we have to do is convert the delta to an integer or a whole number and ignore the sign and that will give us the percentage. So for instance, if I have a call option with a delta of 0.60, that option has a 60% chance of expiring in the money. And if I have a put option with a delta of negative 0.85, that put option has an 85% chance of expiring in the money. This helps explain why options with strike prices near the stock price have deltas around 0.5, suggesting they have around 50% probabilities of expiring in the money. Since stock prices are said to be random, there's theoretically a 50% chance that the stock price will be above or below its current price in the future, which is why at the money options or options with strike prices very close to the current stock price will often have deltas right around positive or negative 0.50. If we look at call options at higher strike prices than the stock price, the call deltas will get closer and closer to zero as the probability of a huge stock price increase is less than the probability of a small stock price increase. On the other hand, if we look at put options at strike prices lower and lower than the stock price, the put deltas will get closer and closer to zero as the probability of a huge stock price decrease is less than the probability of a small stock price decrease. So in other words, the probability of a put option expiring in the money will be higher if the option's strike price is close to the stock price or above the stock price relative to a put option with a strike price way below the stock price. The last thing I wanna mention is that traders will often omit the decimal when referring to an option's delta. And all I mean by that is if I say I'm going to sell a 30 delta put option, I really mean I'm going to sell the put option with a delta of negative 0.30. But instead of saying, I'm going to sell the negative 0.30 put option, traders often will say, I'm going to sell the 30 delta put option. So that's just to make things quicker and it's much easier to say than 0.75 or negative 0.35. But to help you not get confused, if you ever hear someone say they are going to trade an option and they refer to the delta as a whole number, such as a 50 delta call option or a 75 delta put option, they are referring to the option at that same delta level, but in decimal form. So in other words, a 75 delta put option means the option's delta is negative 0.75, but to make things easier, they just say 75 delta option. If you have any questions, comments, or feedback on this video, please leave me a comment down below as I would love to hear from you. Also, be sure to check the links in the description for any other resources that I think you would find helpful related to this video. I'm Chris from Project Option and I will see you in the next video.